Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I have a Hoover Power Dash floor machine. The floor dash is the successor to the Hoover Spin Scrub, which is a at-home hard floor auto scrubber, not intended for carpet use. Full disclosure, Hoover reached out to me a while ago and asked me if I wanted some machines for review, and this is one of the machines I requested from Hoover, but no money has exchanged hands, and that's not going to affect my review of their product. I do also have unboxing video if you want to see what it comes with. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on our latest videos. Now I've got a few different types of hard floor in my house. I put it through multiple different types of tile, wood, and some sealed concrete. So watch the video to the end. I'll also show cleanup and maintenance as well. Tell you what I thought of it overall. First thing I need to do is vacuum. Let's fill the tank. Now I used only Hoover Solution in these tests. I found the tank was a little awkward trying to get in a regular bathroom sink. If you can use a utility sink, that will be a lot better. I also found that the measuring cup is only enough for half the tank, so you have to fill this thing up twice with Hoover Solution. Again, I only used Hoover Solution. However, when you buy the Hoover Solution in a retail package, the whole cup becomes your measuring cup. So using the top of the solution is a little bit more convenient once you buy the solution and the tank fills with ease. Now you can see there are some spots on the floor that just need to be cleaned off. Well, let's see how it does. Well, I can tell you right now that it's working and that it cleaned that spot off the floor, so that's good to see. Let's do the rest of the area. Well, that's just disgusting. Um, I can't believe all that was on my floor in this little area that's maybe like, you know, 20 by 8. It's like a really small area, especially with the furniture and my wife's shoes in it. Uh, but holy shit. Uh, did that pick up some crap in the tank? And give you an idea right there. That's what's left in the clean water tank. So the extraction rate is actually pretty good. Uh, considering what I put down, um, I didn't have the other tank filled all the way just for the record, but I'm pretty happy about that. And like I said, it leaves the floor pretty clean, not all the way dry like it did my other floor when I tried it, but it, it leaves it pretty dry for the most part, much drier than a mop or a microfiber would. Now, nothing's perfect, but one thing that is an annoyance is there's a cord clip right here, which is normal, but it's meant for a different gauge of wire, so it constantly comes undone and is useless. So I find myself holding the cord with this. And I think what the solution is actually going to be is rather than use that cord clip, is to do the old commercial trick where you tie the cord like so. So yeah, I'm probably gonna tie it up like that now when I use it and see if that helps me. The rest of my hard floor looks great. Uh, the Saltillo tile came out, it's nice and shiny. Uh, I think the Hoover solution really is optimized for this style of floor. Now, if you haven't seen one of our reviews before, we do an in the shop section where we take things apart and see how they're made. So let's see what's inside this Hoover. Just have these tanks. Uh, now the gasket does come off. Nice silicone gasket though. Those are replaceable. Well, so far to take it apart, it's very simple. If you need to change out this motor 
which has a little bit of a gearing assembly, uh, which is open top and ventilated. You can see the nylon gears in there. Um, potentially these might need to be lubricated. Kind of doubt it though, they're probably lubricated for the life of the machine. The swivel neck on this is just plastic on plastic, nothing special there, and the pedals underneath. Now that we have it apart like this, which by the way, all the same screws, I really like that, dig that, uh, we should be able to go further into the unit. All right, looking at the motor and the switch, the switch is a branded switch similar to what Dyson and Mila actually both use. That's a commercially available switch. That's good stuff. Now the motor has a shroud to deflect air, but there's no sound ending in here. And that really, really shows when you have the machine on because it is super loud. There's no sound ending. Um, everything else is very mechanical, very simple. These are, I don't believe these are injection molded. If they are, they're very, very thin. Yeah, they are injection molded, but I don't know what kind of plastic they used. It's not a resin. Uh, yeah, if we just scrape off, that's not a resin at all. Um, so it'd be nice to see some glass-filled resin in here, but again, uh, which the motor has, but not the actual casing. But again, these things are so inexpensive, it's hard to imagine them doing it any, any more, like putting any more money into this. Uh, the m machine is a full bypass, which means if you suck up water, it's going to throw it out uh, the side and it's cooling itself with a different uh, fan than it actually moves the air in, which is good uh, for the design. So really, kind of what I expected to see in here, not a whole lot. Um, nothing bad, nothing great. Um, and like I said, certain parts like this, this has some resin in it. If you see how this... See how this doesn't scrape the same? You can just tell, you can also tell by the texture. This has some sort of uh, resin in it, which I really like, or some sort of fibers. But everything is very simple. Once you figure out how to get this fascia off, uh, it's very serviceable. I don't think that they're going to be making a whole lot of these internal parts. And a lot of vacuum stores won't want to deal with this sort of stuff based on the price of the machine. This Hoover logo just comes on and off here with basically, you know, two or three pieces, you can change and put any name you want on this. So presumably there's a fax and an Oryx version of this machine as well. Now for hardwood floor, I switched solutions and bought some of the Hoover solution. Let's see how it does. One thing I want to mention is the maneuverability is good, but it's not great. I wish they had put a swivel neck on this, so it can be a little bit awkward to get in some areas. But again, as you can see, the machine's light enough that you can maneuver it around. But just be aware when you're using it, it's not going to get in everywhere, and you do have to use it kind of like a carpet extractor in a straight line. Well, how'd it do? Here's some GoPro footage of me walking around my kitchen afterwards. It's not the shiniest thing on my unsealed wood floor, which it's not recommended for. I would definitely use it on sealed floor. But it did pretty darn good, and uh, I only used about half the tank, as you can see here. Now, some of you are going to be thinking this thing might scratch your wood floor. Let me show you why that's not the case. The brushes are very soft bristled. They're a very gentle nylon, and they free float in there. As you can see, they move up and down in there. And they're very, very gentle brushes, and they don't spin particularly fast. The squeegee is also pretty soft as well. Now, I didn't just try it in the pretty part of my house. I did try it in my shop as well, which is sealed concrete with all sorts of industrial messes that have sat there, like this rust. I tried it on some oil stains and a variety of other things in there. I didn't have much luck, so I'm going to say it's not for industrial messes, but it is for household use. As far as cleanup goes, it's simple enough, but it is something you have to be do by yourself. There's no auto cleaning mode or anything like that. But everything is rinsable and comes off easily enough. The tank is easy to get into and access and rinse out, along with the squeegee and all the parts. I didn't really have a problem with that. You do need to set them somewhere off the machine to dry overnight or maybe two days if you're in a really wet climate. Well... 
Final thoughts. I think my clean tile really speaks for itself with this machine. Now the reviews of this machine, they're pretty bad. Uh, even on Hoover's own website. And I think the reason for that is the setup and cleanup on this machine is a little bit different. Particularly the cleanup. Uh, why it's easy enough if you're mechanically inclined to pull all this stuff off and, you know, wash it up and store it off the machine when it's wet and needs to dry. Nozzle design and the smaller motor used in this budget uh, means that not all the water gets sucked up into the tank right away. So when you're done with this machine, you have to leave it on for like 20, 30 seconds for the rest of the water to work its way up through the nozzle and into the collection tank so it's not leaking all over the floor. I think if you can store those off the machine and you have the room for that, and you're looking for a mop replacement or a small auto scrubber, this really does uh, fit the bill. And being so lightweight is a real benefit. I wish there was a swivel neck on this machine, but it's easy enough to maneuver. They also put nice soft rubber wheels everywhere. Uh, so I'm really not worried about scratching the floor and the brushes are really soft as well. So overall, I've had a positive experience with this machine, especially with the price. If you have sealed hard floors, this might be the machine for you. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Big thank you to Hoover for sending this out for review. No money was exchanged, but they did send me this free of charge to try and they really took a risk considering I often leave machines like this a bad review. Please check out the links below and have a wonderful day.